Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and you are hopefully watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. Today's film, which I'm sure you know because you've seen the thumbnail, you've clicked it, you've seen the title, you might even have read the description. It's a first impression tutorial and review with the Morphe Vintage Rose palette. So, if you want to find out exactly what she looks like on the inside and how well or otherwise she behaved. What I'm blethering about today and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. And my friend, you're in precisely the right place. As I've said for some time and oft here echoed elsewhere on less imaginative channels. But Sammy the Straw concurs. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. It is blisteringly hot here already this morning. Um, Hence why the fan is on and it's still only <laughs> quarter past seven in the morning. Um, I really needed to do some filming two days ago, but couldn't because of pain. And now when I'm putting my primer on today, I noticed that the new retinol treatment that I'm trying, <laughs> hmm, to say we've got some peelies is, well, let's just say you'll have to forgive me. I have not been out in the sun, I have not been sunburned, I have been using my sun cream, just to prove to you, this is the one I'm using at the moment. This is the Ren Clear Mineral SPF Mattifying Sunscreen. No chemical UV filters and no silicone. I found that one makes me less hot. Um, and then obviously I've got my antiperspirant primer over the top. Right, we're dealing with this today. This is the Artistry palette from Morphe in shade 9V, which is a vintage rose. And she looks like that. I much prefer, I've stuck the little name sheet thing up onto the mirror. Um, I much prefer smaller, more curated palettes. You know, a 9 or a 12 or a 15 pan is pretty much perfect for me, to be honest. Um, and for me, if I'm doing neutrals, these are the sort of colours that I aim for. I aim for mauves and pinky tones think in fact i've just bought it from anastasia i've just bought born fresco as a single because it's the only shade that i really really miss out of modern renaissance that i decluttered um so you know i've, I've got quite a few mauvey toned palettes but i thought i'd give this more for one a go because it's you know it's accessible to a lot of people it's quite cheap um, so I'd see what the quality was like. This is, of course, still a teaching channel. So by virtue of that, I will be going at a speed that suits my chronic pain and that beginners can keep up with. If this is too fast or too slow for you, there is a speed widget. Unless you sinking me through to your TV, I believe it works on every device. Feel free to use it. I'm going to be inserting a clip in just a moment where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. 
the number of people that I see, even the bigger beauty gurus that say, I've got hooded lids, and you look at them and I think, your eyes are open and I can see your mobile lid. You do not have a hooded lid. You've got deep set eyes. I've got deep set eyes, so I understand that the way that eyeshadow wears throughout the day is very similar to how deep to how hooded eyes behave, which is why I think so many problem get so many people get mixed up. The issue is the way that you apply the makeup in the first place is very different depending on which type of eye you have. So I'll insert that clip just now, talk you through it, and then at the other end I'll be applying some of these colours onto my lids. If you've not seen my tutorials before, I zoom right in close so it's just my eyes on the screen so you can see exactly what's going on. See you at the other end of this clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid 
where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, okay I'm back, as you can see, look, can you see the peeling on my eyelids here? And there's even more on my chin, so let's just, let's just say the retinol is doing its work. <laughs> right, I'm going to start off with this tapered blending brush. And I'm going to go into, they call it rose gold, to me this is a, a perfect mauve, I wouldn't call this rose gold at all. It's quite dusty, but that's really not an issue for me because I just pick up the kick up next time round when I'm building the colour up. Now, hold the brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on your eyes as possible, and then we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz blend. So we start at the outside because if we suddenly get a, a deposit of pigment that doesn't want to move it's much easier to blend it out here when you haven't got your nose in the way. We're then going to do natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there and then reverse turns to come back out again. And I'm going to start just above where my natural crease is. Now the reason that I do the Viennese Waltz blend and recommend it is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. Okay, that was more pigmented than I was expecting. Why is it the minute I sit my butt down, my phone buzzes? It hasn't buzzed all damn morning, I've been up since half past four. Now, all of a sudden, I'm getting a string of emails in. Fantastic. Anyway, as I was saying, this is way more pigmented than I was expecting. That's a good sign. I was not expecting Morphe to be that good, to be honest. Yeah, so the skin on my eyelids moves. Um, but I know 20-year-olds that have always been slim that have mobile lids, it, it can just be down to genetics. Right my lovers, I'm now going to do the same thing on this eye. The reason that I do them both kind of, not at the same time, but each stage at the same time, is because fibro can make my eyes and my lids swell and puff and do all kinds of strange things. Plus, your eyes are not symmetrical, and sometimes when you sit back and relax your brows and look forward, see I've done exactly the same shape, both sides, but this side looks slightly lower, so I need to bring this outside edge up a bit. And if I'd already put other colours on and blended it, I may not necessarily have seen that. You know, your eyes aren't symmetrical, folks. You do sometimes have to do different shapes to get them looking the same, unless you photoshop them like a certain Jimmy Chuck does. <laughs> right, I'm going to uh, give this brush a wipe on a clean washcloth. I don't like using colour switches. Uh, I used to, but they were killing my brushes. Uh, especially my natural haired ones. This is synthetic, but yeah, I really wouldn't recommend colour switches except as an absolute last result. Use a washcloth, use a microfiber cloth, use a you know cotton pad, old tea towel, bit of kitchen roll, anything rather than 
I kind of switch leggy pyjamas. I've done that before now. I know. Right, using the same brush, I am going to go into Perth in Pink. So I've just put this one on. I'm now going to do this one. No, I haven't been to the salon, please. The salon would not do nails that look like that. I had to play myself doing acrylics and managed to do them pointed. So, yes, I have poked myself in the eye about three times this morning and clawed my bum. Because it's been so long since I had pointy nails. <laughs> but even though now salons are open, my one has a strict one person per appointment only and I need hubby with me for physical and emotional support otherwise I'll have an anxiety attack so I still can't go and get my nails done yet right if you are blending two colours together and you don't want an editorial look you don't want a harsh line between the two colours it's always best to start off with the brush half on the colour that you've already laid down and half on the bare skin and use that and just blend very gently along that edge first because what this will do will give you a really soft gradient rather than it then being a harsh line you can then go in and continue up I do struggle sometimes here and here with dry patches and obviously with the, the peeling from the new retinol that I'm using that could get a bit worse but come see come saw Rodney that's a British thing uh, an 80s TV show it's probably 80s and 90s actually I think you know so you can see we've got a really nice gradient there, there's no obvious delineation of where one colour becomes the next, which is really nice. I have to admit I am pleasantly surprised so far with this palette. I really, I wasn't expecting this kind of quality from Morphe. Um, I genuinely am a little bit shocked. Why can't all of your palettes be like this? Look at that, I just blended out effortlessly. Good grief, man. That's lush. It's tidy. Right, I'm going to go in with a slightly more tapered brush. A little bit. If you look at the difference between the two, you can see this one's significantly smaller. And whatever the width of the head of the brush, that's how far it blends the shadow out to. So I'm going to go into the deepest matte in here, which is Forget Me Not, which is a brown. Forget Me Not's a blue, for goodness sake. Why would you call a brown Forget Me Not? That's ridiculous. Oh, this is super dusty. Like, seriously, you heard how much I tapped off then. Look at that. So I'm going to go right deep into my crease for this one. If you have moved your crease, this is the point that you follow the new line that you've put down. So I'm blending Viennese waltzing about two thirds of the way along and then just gently pulling what's left into that corner.
just to deepen this up because whatever is dark goes backwards, whatever is light comes forwards. So this will help trick the eye if you have moved your crease so that people are tricked into thinking that that part of your eye is a crease and it does go back further. I'm just going to continue that down just onto the edge of the mobile lid there. A bit more fallout from this shade but I do my foundation afterwards anyway so I'm really not overly worried by that. just there but then that is the part of my eye that's really peely today from the retinol so it could be that that's affecting it it's the problem when you try new skincare I am um, on the trial thing for Boots which is a chemist in the UK here and they send out um, targeted questionnaires for the new products that they're testing. Um, and every so often you'll get sent something new that they're developing to try. You know like when it says so and so percent of people saw a difference in yada 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 and X number of people tested it. Yeah, I'm quite often one of those people. You know, I don't get them often, but it's nice when you do get them and you know I've uh, I ended up using the number seven cream for quite a while after I tried it out. It's really nice until I started using the Olay uh, kind of whipped one that I use now. Again, just carry that down into the cream up. You get a bit like I've got here that's gone a bit patchy. Once you've got the edges all blended out how you want, pop some pigment just on the end of the brush and do the tap to blend. Just to build the pigment up in the area that it's being stubborn. Okie dokie. Tidy those edges up. This is just my cell of water on a cotton pad. I don't like using um, tape because if the tape is sticky enough to stop pigment from going underneath it, then it's sticky enough to pull at your skin when you take it off. Much prefer doing it like this. Right, got my spray. Uh, let's just pop those two brushes back because I'm done with those now. Uh, grab this little flat brush. And I'm going to go into. I'm going to retro one to start with. This is quite an oily formula. It's quite sticky on the brush and. As you can see it's starting to almost hard pan on the side there, but it's the kind of hard pan that you can still pick up pigment, so it doesn't worry me. 
wet the brush which now means the ferrule is wet so tuck it in your knuckles and spin because the last thing you want is moisture going down here loosening the glue because then you won't have a brush you'll have a stick right and come right into the corner like this oh wow healers are really not helping today I would have skipped filming today, to be honest, to see if they calm down a bit tomorrow. But unfortunately I need to put this film up tomorrow, so... That's a little pull that across the lid like that, dry the brush off, go back in and pick up some more pigment to do the other eye. Now, the other eye, because I have this super deep crease in here, as you can see, uh, that was because my eye was pulled around when I was literally five years old. So I do have to deal with this slightly differently. I do have to stretch my lid out, which is something that I always advise, always advise you not to do. So the width of the creasing is the width of my nail. So I'll take the same width again and then put my finger on my lid and gently stretch it out just so it's stretched out far enough that it flattens out that crease so that I can get this blended onto the lid because if I don't do this the pigment builds up loosely in those creases and then throughout the day ends up cascading into my eye and down my cheek and that's extremely, extremely painful. Clean the brush off and now I'm going to go into the shimmer called Legend Has It. Again, this is quite a quite a wet formula. I still spray it though, I, I spray most shimmers, um, helps to fall out, helps to increase the reflection. So I'm just going to apply that to that last little section of the lid that doesn't have any pigment on it and then carefully drag the lighter shimmer across on it and use the tip of the bristles to gently buff where it meets the matte shade. That there is where I've got a peely. I will deal with it off camera when I put my foundation on. This is why I warned you beforehand that I was using a new retina. Oh, I think I finally got to the end of this bottle. Yay! Show you how long a setting spray can last for, though, doesn't it? You don't have to use a setting spray. You can use a priming spray, a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. Uh, you could even, you know, save your spray bottle and then fill it up with fresh water from the tap each day and again just use the tip of the bristles there to blend hmm. pretty right my loves I am going to pause you while I uh, do some foundation sort that bit out just there annoying little thing and then I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you you're not going to have to wait at all though it's going to be instant for you hello I am back right once again I have done my soap brows using my pink honey 
uh, honey glue in a strawberry sherbet looks like this you basically stick your spoolie down the middle spoolie your brows up now they recommend to wet your spoolie I don't do that I apply it dry so it stays a bit sticky I then used the other end and I went into that first shade that I used, the mauve, which they've called rose gold, and just brushed that through the brow. This has two benefits. Because you didn't put it on wet and it's sticky, the powder sticks to it. The powder then sets it and holds it in place. So it holds your brows more throughout the day. And I've actually got a glowy blush on. Technically it's a highlighter, but seeing as how I couldn't get the highlighter that would work for me, I grabbed the next shade up, it's Luna Beauty, and it's Mars, which looks like that. Now I possibly could have got away with it if I'd used a lighter hand as a highlighter, but highlighter light hand me yeah that's not gonna happen mm -mm. right flat top brush going back into that forget me not brown again and I'm just gonna run that along under my lower lash line I struggle putting things on my waterline. I have had some luck with the BH Power Pigment Pencils. Um, but the majority of the time I've got very watery eyes anyway. Add to that one of my fibro symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever, which is real this year. In some years I don't get it too badly, but this year, whew, 2020 is coming for me. So I always like to smoke the lower lash line out, just because I think it finishes the look off nicely. Especially when you can't put something in your lower lash line. Now, I like using the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped and chunky. <laughs> um, but you can use any smudger brush or densely packed blender to buff out and I'm going to go into Blossom which is this more cool toned nude here because these are quite pinky mauves this is a definitely a, a neutral mauve And this for me will be my true nude. And I'm just going to use that to buff all the way along the lower lash line to soften and blend it out a bit. How's your day been so far? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I hope tomorrow's better for you. And uh, if you're at the start of your day in your shower, like Christopher, or doing your makeup like Laura, good morning. I hope you have a good day. Right, this is a cheap little lip brush. I bought this from eBay ten years ago. Probably more than that now. Look after your brushes, they look after you. That's so cool now. Right, I'm going to go into the shade Flourish. And I'm going to pop that just up under the tail of the brow. Because apparently along with boobs and balls and everything else, our brows sink as we get older, folks. Isn't that lovely? So popping a little bit of brightness under them just helps with giving the illusion of a lifted brow. And then we'll pop some in the corner here. I like to bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it in to the under eye. 
for my eye shape I think that finishes the look nicely you don't have to do that you can just do in a corner and leave it at that do you know what I think this might actually be light enough to use as a face highlight as well a face highlight with very strong corner then didn't I tennis tennis I haven't even got a racket right my lovelies enough silliness um, I'm going to pause you one last time, I'm going to chuck some highlight on my face, mascara, lippy, uh, do something with the hair, which yes, I chuck a semi-permanent dye on because I was fed up seeing the greys and looking like my mum. So it has tinted the greys, a rather nice apricot shade, which I'm quite happy with actually. So yeah, I should be back with my finished look and my thoughts, first impressions on this palette. Again, for you. Instant, after this wibbly bit. My lovelies, I am back. Right. Um, I chucked a little bit of silver from the um, BH Power Pencil on my uh, waterline. I don't know how long that will last for. Let's keep my fingers crossed. Um, I did end up using that shade that I used here as a highlighter and it's really blended beautifully with that um, Luna Beauty highlight. This is really going to become my go-to summer blush I think. I am really into shimmery blushes at the moment and this I think is really really pretty. Uh, the mascara is the Essence uh, Lash Princess, the orange one, which is Volume Mascara. Uh, what else I need to tell you? Oh, the lipstick is Dose of Colours in Sleepless. You know I'm on a quest to find dupes for my favourite Jeffrey colours. This is going to become my go-to instead of Posh Spice. This has got that greyish mauve tone that I wanted and that I love in Posh Spice. So. If you love Posh Spice and you're no longer supporting Jeffrey, Sleepless by Dose of Colours is a pretty good damn match for it. So, this palette, what do I think? Um, sorry, I have an issue. I, I, I'm not one of these people that... I know, you know, people like Paulina say they love to see their palettes looking used, and I, I don't. I, I like my palette to look absolutely brand new when I open it up. Otherwise, it puts me off. So, just cleaning up that shimmer. Um, I've used one, two, three, four mattes, and three of the shimmers. So there's only two shades in here I haven't used yet. Uh, one of those is this bone sort of setting shade called that's classic. And the other one is what's the other one I haven't used? Did I use retro wild? Did I use perfume pink on my eyes? I can't remember. I think it was. Has it worked for a while? Do you know what? I genuinely don't know now, but let's, let's... I think that's the two that I've not used yet. <laughs> yes, I've got my top half done, but I've still got my PJs on because it's shorts and it's hot. And, and, and they're the most comfortable, cool things I've got to wear at the moment. Everything else is in the wash. Um, what do I think of this? I am genuinely surprised at how well 
this performed. I really like it. Um, and I wasn't expecting to say that. I, I was expecting a mediocre review saying, mm, it's okay kind of thing, but a beginner could pick this up and get a good look from it. Which I wouldn't have said about the Hello Berlin palette, which was the previous film that went up. That's not beginner friendly. This is actually beginner friendly, which I'm really surprised. I like... The only change I would have made is I would have got rid of this bone setting shade here because that only works if you're super pale and not being funny, I don't set my eyelid primer, I don't need to. And that again will only work if you're like uncooked chicken or similar. So it's a bit of a waste, I would have preferred Maybe another matte in there. I mean, this one and these two are quite neutral. Actually, no, sorry, this one and this one are quite neutral. These two are quite warm. So it would have been nice to have some maybe a cool toned matte so that you could use the cool tone and then pull in one of the other shades and just have a, an additional look because um, I really don't think that bone shade is going to get used by an awful lot of people. That being said, do I recommend the palette? If you like this colour scheme then yeah. Um, it's a shame it's plastic packaging, not cardboard, environmental stuff, but then I guess this will travel better. Um, I genuinely am shocked at how well that has performed, as I think you can tell from the fact that I'm groping for words, which is normally something I struggle with. I hope you found this helpful, um, I hope you liked this look. Would you have pulled this particular look or would you have gone for a different option from the palette? Would you use that bone setting shade? Or like like me, is that just like a wasted pan in the palette? Let me know. Um, I read all my comments, I try and reply to as many of them as I can. Uh, I don't always get notified of them but I do go back and regularly check through to see if there's any that I've missed. That being said, if you are one of my 4F babies, please check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting people, but they're leaving my films in your news feed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted. Once you've done that, a little like, that comment, maybe a bit of a share would be quite nice. Um, you know, see if we can get this out there and uh, tempt a few more people into the 4F world. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm not always this peely and weird. Actually, I lie, I am usually this weird, but I'm not usually this peely. It would be lovely if you would like to join the 4F family, because let's face it, if you've made it this far through the film, there must have been something that appealed to you super easy to join you just hit that red subscribe button turn it from red to grey then you ring my bell ring my bell and say yes and all notifications and keep saying that no matter how many times they ask you and then hopefully you'll get told I don't know one in four of my films that goes up even hubby doesn't get all of them and he'll sometimes get them a month late as well which is jolly interesting I do have an awful lot of other films you can watch though. Um, I've got product reviews, tutorials, challenges, collabs, I've got my Zodiac series, tag films, I even read you my favourite poem. So there's going to be something on here that you're going to find interesting. So if you're looking for some me time, basically 
grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and get comfy. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.